Hi everyone, praise the Lord. Last time we saw that we are God's children. And because we are God's children, we are created in His image and likeness. And we need not be upset when people condemn us or reject us because our self-worth, our value doesn't change. It remains the same. We are still going to be the child of God. Today again, I have a very wonderful topic and I really want you to listen to this video, to watch this video till the end. So we all have various life experiences and this life experiences really conditions our mind. It conditions our mind about God, about ourselves, about religion, about truth, about a lot of things. Imagine that if we have a perception about God and that perception is not aligning with the real God, the real image of God, then what is going to happen? We are going to be afraid of Him. We are going to run away from Him. We are going to be scared to pray to Him. We don't know how to pray and a lot of things. So today's video is going to help you on this matter. I remember a priest mentioning in one of his articles about a young boy. A young boy had come to meet him for counseling. And this priest was telling that this young boy was really very, very angry with God. He was sharing all his frustration and everything that he, he was not at all at peace. He was broken. He had lost his job. He had relationship crisis. And he was telling, why is God doing these things to me? He said, he went to that extent that he told the priest that I want to throw God out of the window. And when he said that, the priest responded, that I really want you to throw this God of yours out of the window. So this boy was really surprised and asked the priest, how can you say like this? The priest responded by saying that if you throw this God out of the window, I can help you to discover the real God. The God who is not like the way you think. He is actually very different from the image that you are carrying about him. And therefore you need to get rid of the wrong image that you have about him. Yes, friends. 1 John 4 16 b says that God is love and those who abide in love abide in God and therefore we need to know that God is really love but this is very difficult for some of us to accept because we are conditioned by the surrounding society that we are born with and sometimes we might even project the image of our parents upon God our parents who are weak like us who are also imperfect. They have their own uh, childhood experiences which they are carrying along. And they do love us. They have brought us into this world. However, they can, uh, their image, if we project their image upon God, we might feel that God is very different from who he really is. CCC 239 says, The language of faith thus draws on the human experience of parents who are in a way the first representative of God for man. But this experience also tells us that human parents are fallible and, and, and can disfigure the face of fatherhood and motherhood. This has to tell us that human parents are the first representatives of God. So we might think God to be an angry person we might also perceive God to be someone who is behind us and telling us this is wrong and that is right and being very judgmental. We might also feel that God is like an absent father who was not there for so long. And we might feel God to be indifferent, distant and a lot of uh, perceptions about God. But that is not how God is because our parents are also weak like us and we need to honor and love them though they can also be in, uh, they, though they also can make mistakes and we need to know about God who is very different. He is the perfect father. He has no, he makes no mistakes. He is all about mercy. He came down from heaven to show us that he is not distant. He is not far away. He is very close to our hearts. Even the very nature around us calms our stress and uh, you know shows us that God is love and uh, it is also witnessing to God's love. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. We might also perceive God to be someone who is not happy with people who are not pious or who are not prayerful, which is not true. God is very different. Now, how to know the real image of God? How to know 
we can only know it when we study the bible from the mind of the church the teachings of the church the lives of saints and the testimonies of people have all witnessed to this fact that god is merciful love he is mercy he is love for example if i've never been to europe but i've heard about europe and because i've heard about it i know that it's a wonderful place to visit same way we might be uh, we might have not experienced something that doesn't mean it doesn't exist god exists and his love is genuine unconditional and a very real love and to experience it we need to be open to that love some of us have been conditioned that to please god we need to do a lot of prayers navinas this devotion that devotion which is true that we need to pray all these things but not to please god this has to be done with the core thing that is our relationship with god we might you know we might skip the relationship aspect that we need to have relationship with god as the prime core thing and then we are doing all these devotions and prayers will then it will have a good meaning from the very core of our heart to know that god is love we need to be open to him only when we are ready to unlearn all the wrong ideas about god which we are carrying over the years and being open to god then we can know the real image of god jesus is mercy we have to accept him as our own we have to allow him and give him a chance to show how much he loves us otherwise we will always uh, be unaware of god's love in mass we sing this song the steadfast love of the lord never ceases His mercies never have come to an end. We sing this song, but do we really mean that the steadfast love of the Lord will not end and His mercies will not end? If we really believe in this, then why are we carrying the burden of guilt? Why are we carrying our sins along with us? Why are we not approaching the sacrament of reconciliation? Why are we not telling God to have mercy on us? And why are we not believing that God can forgive us for all our sins? and if we believe in this we will know that god is mercy god is love he is not the image that we have been t- telling about ourselves we shouldn't be afraid of him in a negative sense we should have a fear of the lord but in a positive sense not a negative fear of the lord and we should continue abiding in his love so let us allow jesus by encountering him daily in our day to day life by being vigilant to his voice by sitting in his presence and allowing him to heal all the wrong image that we have about him so let us make a small prayer lord reveal yourself to us show show to us how merciful and loving you are erase all the wrong ideas which we have about you lord and help us to believe that you are a god who loves us and because of your love we are we should be unafraid to approach you and we should make you our best friend give us the grace so that your unconditional love can totally and completely heal us amen thank you god bless you bye bye